Hello, and welcome to another Business Spotlight. Again, my name is Megan, and I get the pleasure to speak to Monica today with Spousely. And if you have not heard of Spousely yet, definitely look it up right now because it's going to be your new best friend, and I will let her take over from here. Hey, Megan. Thanks so much for having me. Yes, I'm so excited to chat uh, more about this journey and what Spousely is. So I am Monica Fullerton. I am an Air Force spouse a twin mom, and I am a corporate businesswoman turned entrepreneur. And so I launched Spousely out of my own pure frustration and inspiration as a military spouse. Um, there is just so much talent within our military community alone that I knew I had to do something. So Spousely is basically like Etsy meets Angie's List, but all military and first responder owned businesses. Um, and you can find both products and services. And we encourage everyone to check it out. Like Megan said, it will become your new go-to and best friend, especially when you're looking for, you know, those custom gifts or sending something that just really goes above and beyond. Yeah, thank you. And I remember when I first heard about it, I was just so being, uh, you know, have military family members, my dad's military, my brother, cousins, Grandparent, like it's just, it's all flow through, uh, especially here in Las Vegas. It's, it's not a good, sh you know, hard stretch to find right. somebody in the military community in one way or another. So um, yeah, even since meeting you, it's been, you know, it's always top of mind of, oh, okay, who hasn't known about this yet? Who can I tell? Yes. That's what I love about it too, is because it's exactly like what you said. There's always some kind of connection, whether it's a family member or a neighbor or a friend, and it's really just getting to know and understand, you know, the lifestyle a bit more. And, um, we'll probably talk about it in a little bit, but just how these small businesses truly help our community while living a life on the go. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. So, um, you've mentioned, you know, going from corporate to entrepreneurship and, you know, we've discussed that many times yeah. <laughs> and, and really just the, a lot of different things that, that would require of a person to, to be successful. And so I would love for you to speak into that a little bit more. Um, and it, it could just be general or maybe even specific for women of yeah. what, uh, maybe some obstacles that you came across or really what that turning point was for you to make that jump. Yeah. So, um, obviously, you know, with corporate, it's amazing because you do have that security, right? Everything's about, you have that comfort of your paycheck, your, you know, you know, you have a job or whatever it might lead to, to on your path of where you're trying to go. But entrepreneurship, I mean, is a whole different world. It is so, so hard to be able to grow and build something from the ground up, whether it's, you know, what we were just talking about franchises, whether it's a franchise or whether it's your own idea, it's not easy. Um, and it's one of those things that really cannot be taught in a classroom. It can't be taught, you know, from a textbook. It is something that you just have to learn along the way. So for me, I had no idea what I was getting myself into with a multi-vendor marketplace, like in the tech world and the, you know, multi-vendor world of everything. It's just, it's stuff that I've never been taught. Nothing that anybody could have told me what to do. Mm -hmm. It's just, you take that passion that you have for something that you believe in and something that you want to grow and you just figure out how to make it work. Um, you just keep learning and learning and learning. And what I have learned is that your struggles, your challenges, your failures are what truly get you to the next level on this journey. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I would agree. And I think that's what I really do love with us at Action Coach is we not only have, you know, do we understand that myself included and vast majority, if not all of our coaches have been entrepreneurs. And so we yeah. know that struggle and it's really with that mindset of, yeah, like you said, nobody teaches you anything. There is no course of like, I'm now a six yes. master entrepreneur. It's like, it's not yes. a thing. And so that's what, uh, at least for me personally, really drew me to come on board was the guidance and, yes. and really kind of knowing and having those systems to, 
to kind of put into place in the business. And so it's like, oh yeah, let's look at your numbers. Let's, let's look at these things that maybe you didn't even think that you needed to do or what an yeah. operating procedure is <laughs> like, what is Well, you that? quickly have to become an expert in all different areas and it's hard. And that is something, you know, I've learned is that really write down what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, because at the end of the day, you have to figure out how to make it all work. And for me, one of my biggest, you know, flaws is I love business. I've always been obsessed with everything business related, but I hate, and I don't love numbers, but obviously you have to get comfortable with numbers and you have to be able to understand, you know, different aspects of the business, which I'm still every day learning something new about, or, you know, like, okay, if you take this formula and you apply it here, let's see what the outcome looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's just the constant learning and testing yourself, but also knowing where to seek help when you need it and advice from others, because that's so important because the journey itself is, it's hard and you just keep learning as you go. Yeah, absolutely. And I love what you had said was, writing down your strengths and weaknesses, because just having awareness, I think that's so powerful for us. Um, But yeah, I I like that, that little piece (laughs) of advice. Thank you for that. Yeah. Um, So what would you say is something that you took from your corporate world into entrepreneurship? Like what was some like direct lines of like lessons or or just skill sets? Um, for me, it was all about leadership. Um, and this is something I think many people can relate to. And oftentimes it's what drives you to become an entrepreneur, whether you've had a great experience or a bad experience, it all usually stems from some sort of leadership, right? We know those people that we love Mm -hmm. that just inspired us, uh, to always be, be better, to do better. And then we also have come across probably people on our journey that were leaders that really weren't leading the right way. And, Um, That's something that I took from my corporate career was I was very close with the owner who ended up passing away Mm -hmm. uh, unexpectedly, which totally just kind of showed me like a leader like him was just such a unicorn, unicorn. He believed in his people. It was all about Mm -hmm. the community. He always saw the best in all of us and our strengths for who we were, what our family dynamic looked like. And he found a way to always make us want to show up every day, you know, being the best version of ourselves because he believed in us. We weren't just, you know, underneath him. We weren't just his workers growing the company. Like we were all one. And that was something that when I knew I wanted to, you know, go into entrepreneurship was I wanted to build a company off of amazing leadership like him, where it wasn't about me as the founder. It was about us as a community. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. And I will definitely echo. Um, <laughs> yeah. We, there's, there have been some, like, I would never. Mm-mm. Yeah. <laughs> and then others that experiences, right. Absolutely. We have to go through them. And it's like, even when you're going through it at the time, you're like, why am I even dealing with this? Yeah. Like, how are you leading like that? And then you go through the amazing experiences and you're like, okay, this mm-hmm. is why you have to see a little bit of everything is because then yeah. you can wrap it up into what you want to do on your own journey. Yeah, absolutely. So just a slight little pivot. Yeah. <laughs> kind mm-hmm. of, a not um, what I would love for you to share about a struggle that you had in yeah. your current business and how did you navigate through that? Because that struggle is going to come like obstacles are going to happen. And so how did you get through that? And really what would your advice be for, for an, a newer entrepreneur um, when they get up to that struggle point? Like how, yeah. how, what would you speak into that? Well, I can definitely speak a lot on this because I am, I'm true. I'm truly in the hustle and grind still of building from the ground up. Um, I have definitely, you know, haven't gotten to where I know it's capable of going. We're still on that climb of the constant Mm -hmm. build, which it's forever going to be a build. I I really don't believe in anything 
the, the overnight success because you're just constantly changing, growing and building. Um, but what I can say is that, you know, there's a lot of doubt around you, around what you're building and uh, on this journey as an entrepreneur. And I've learned that sometimes there's so much noise that it can cloud mm. your own vision and cloud your own path when it was crystal clear when you first launched and you knew exactly where you wanted to go. But because there's so much noise constantly around you on this journey, it can be really hard to stay focused and to stay on that clear path. Mm -hmm. uh, I've, I've veered off the path many times. And sometimes when I go off the path and I maybe take somebody else's advice or, you know, I think this is the right next move, or this person is who they say they are, that they can help mm -hmm. you know, be the unicorn that I need, right? Now, <laughs> or whatever it is. At the end of the day, it is you as a person, it's you as a leader, whether you're a founder, whether you're in a corporate company, like you mm -hmm. are truly the one that's going to drive the, on the path that you want to go. And it's up to us to be able to just overcome doubt, to really continue to put ourselves in the driver's seat, even mm -hmm. when sometimes it feels like we're taking a back seat. So, um, I don't know if that fully answered all of your question. <laughs> a little down a rabbit hole, but I really do believe it's all around doubt because there's going to be mm. doubt no matter what you do, whether it's self-doubt or doubt from others. Maybe it's someone who didn't believe in you, or maybe it's an investor that you're getting feedback, you know, not the feedback that you wanted from. Yeah. There's always going to be doubt. It's up to us to overcome the noise. Mm. Yeah. So um, how would you say that you got yourself through that? Like what tools did you do or who did you maybe incorporate or what did that look like? Yeah. So mentors and just people that you trust most, having them very close to you and in your circle of just knowing who you are, what you, what you're trying to do, they can help you continue to align. I think, you know, I, I actually am working on a LinkedIn article about this right now, like the power of communication, like don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't be afraid mm. to use your voice. And that's something that has continued to just pull me out of, um, you know, if I'm in a funk from something, or maybe I did veer off the path and now I'm like over here and like, you know, the rocks and it's bumpy and it's just, I feel like <laughs> I'm stuck, but the power of communication is what mm. personally has allowed me to just continue sharing where I'm at, where I'm stuck, where I need help. How can we overcome it? Because mm. Oftentimes we just don't <laughs> seek the advice or the help that we need. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. And um, yeah, I'm a big believer in like, yeah, building your community, building your village, yeah. um, all of those things. And and you did speak into it a little too of uh, you know, kind of like that noise. And and so what is your take on the environment that you place yourself in, or maybe the environment that you need to place yourself in? Yeah. So I, I'm trying to get better at saying no to uh, people, opportunities, whatever it might be that just doesn't feel like it's the right fit because, you know, oftentimes as an entrepreneur and you're building, you're growing, you feel like you need to, to say yes to everything because you don't want to miss out on, you know, what might yeah. be the best opportunity to keep moving forward. But in reality, um, really protecting your space, getting better at saying no, um, <laughs> and that will help you, you know, realize where you need to put your focus because I mean, you know, this as a, as a, a business coach and everything, it's business owners are all over the place constantly. <laughs> like our brain, it's like squirrel, like, squirrel here. there. Right right here. This. Yeah. <laughs> it's so hard and it's, it's mm -hmm. just the constant struggle, but if you can get better at saying no and surrounding mm -hmm. yourself intentionally with people that can help you get to where you want to go, whether it's good feedback, bad feedback, connections, resources, tools, whatever it might be, I'm all about the quality over quantity right now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and I like to say, you know, when you say no to something or someone else, you're saying yes to yourself. Yeah. And so Which is going, hard. yeah, really hard. But yeah. And going back to your point before, it's really like, again, it's, it's knowing yourself Yeah. and, and so that it can get you through some of those more difficult times or difficult situations. Yes. <laughs> We all need Absolutely. it. Yes. So just as a wrap up and kind of final question, do you have any current offerings or anything exciting going on within your company or on your site or anything like that that you would like to share? 
Yeah, so we are totally in growth mode right now. Um, we launched right before the pandemic, so really bad timing, but have continued to brew, prove that our mission is viable and impactful. So we do have over 500 vendors now selling on Spousely. Um, we're getting ready to take Spousely to the next level. So I just really encourage anyone that's listening to head on over to Spousely.com, you know, make it your go-to to look for a gift, to find a way to support a military or first responder family. Um, just being more intentional about the way that we are not only spending, but the way that we're supporting others uh, is so important. So my ask is, you know, shop spousely, make a big, greater impact. Um, and also, you know, if you're interested in learning more about ways that you can support us in our journey from a funding standpoint, we're getting ready to bring on investors. So just working on all the things right now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love it. And I've loved uh, just watching your growth, even just in the time that I've known you. And it's really, really exciting to, to watch something grow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's been just an incredible journey. It's been a really, really hard journey. Um, you know, I feel like I've been told no more than I've been told yet, but that's pretty much every entrepreneur's story. Uh, so we can all say that, but yeah, at the yeah. end of the day, <laughs> it's been amazing to just see this path continue to just open up new doors for our community, for our vendors, for our supporters. Um, and I, I couldn't ask to be on a better journey. So yes, yes. It's exciting. Well, thank you so much again, Monica. I've really enjoyed, our, I enjoy all of our conversations. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> this has been yeah. wonderful and I'm excited for anybody that is watching this, has come across this, uh, where this information may take you or how you may decide to support. Yes. Thank you so much for having me and, and just allowing me to share a little bit about Spousely and my journey because that's what we've got to do, right? Keep sharing yeah. our stories. Absolutely. All right. Well, this was another wonderful business spotlight and we'll see you next time.